Yes, I realize I'm a Bethesda stan and they can proverbially do no wrong. This notion forced me to do some introspection and come up with a list of some flaws that maybe Bethesda themselves could possibly see and address. With your help, wink wink, like and subscribe. With no further ado, here are the five things Starfield got wrong. To also offer some balance to the conversation. Number five, dialogue. All right, I understand that dialogue was one of the top ten things that Starfield got right, if you saw my last video. It's because of that that it makes this list. While the dialogue is expertly written and brilliantly acted, there isn't enough of it. So those interactions with the NPCs become droning and monotonous after a while while you grind, and it isn't easy to skip through the dialogue on console, which I wish you could, like a commenter mentioned. Always nice seeing new faces. All those years of college? Totally pay off. It's a living, right? Always nice seeing new faces. All those years of college? Totally pay off. It's a living, right? Always nice seeing new faces. It's a living, right? All those years of college? You get the point. Ironically enough, number four is redundancy. You might recognize this abandoned robotics facility I'm in currently, because you should. Or how about this location here? Maybe you can name it in the comments section, because if it has the same name, it is identical in almost every way to every other of the same name. While the loot and enemies are procedurally generated, the floor plans are not. However, I do think there's enough variety in location type to keep me satiated for now. For now. Number three would definitely be no radio. The lack of the radio is what I have a problem with. It's not the score. The score is masterful, as usual. But I was spoiled by the radio stations in Fallout, and I feel kind of deprived in that regard. Oh, and I'm the type of guy who will never settle down. You mean to tell me throughout this galaxy not one person makes music? And I know I see some damn instruments and speakers. No MP3 players, no radio stations, and we explore in space? Star-Lord would be disappointed. He would never. No! No! Number two. It's too big, too much, too ambitious. In my humble opinion, I feel like the bandwidth used would have been better served dedicating more to quality over quantity. If this is the blank canvas I've been trying to speak into existence, I kinda get it. The plan was to have sustainability for a game over a decade. And considering the fact that I can still pick up Skyrim and play it today, I'm still hopeful. However, what it says to my current gaming experience isn't laudable. More lore, more variety, and fewer planets and star systems that most of us will never see all of anyway. They could remove some and most of us wouldn't even notice. And finally, number one. There's no survival mode. The game poses very little challenge when compared to its predecessors or contemporaries. The efficacy of our suits at preventing various environmental stimuli from harming us is moot. So we only use one. Radiation does little damage. Extreme heat and cold do little damage. There's no need to carry more than med packs or trauma kits with you. Sell the food you find. There's no need to drink water or sleep. Hopefully all of this changes. As far as I'm concerned, this game is still in the developmental phase. And we're all beta testing. What will we say this time next year when the devs and modders have had their way with it? In the meantime, I'll enjoy it as much as I can. Thanks for watching. See you.